It's time for a fiesta. Oh, sorry, fiesta where? This time we're doing a tour of Prudhomme's Antique and Flea Market. It's in the winter, so you don't have everything, as you'll see. This is from Street View, so you see there are some items that are on the outside, even as far as the street. Uh, this is the uh, sign that's actually posted on the North Building. You'll see the North Building in just a moment. We're not doing this building, but we will be doing it in a upcoming video. Today we're only doing the South Building. These are the um, uh, huts uh, that are used by the outdoor vendors. Some of the vendors have sp these huts to store their goods inside of. Uh, you'll often see those tables filled up with um, items for offer. This is the South Building. It's all stairs, just as a heads up. And there's the uh, opposite the South Building. You've still got some of those little cabins, the storage buildings. Welcome, I'm Hawaiian Shirt Pop. Sometimes with others, I visit a variety of antique, vintage, and thrift shops within Southern Ontario. Sometimes we don't get anything. Come tour with me vicariously. And here we are just going in. There are stairs to go up and there are stairs to go down. They have an ATM. And this is what these I don't know if they're exactly as booths or or shelves or what how they delineate them, but there's multiple vendors. I suspect that this one is one vendor in this nook. The some vendors may have sub at some other space to somebody else potentially. And here's another one of those. They've got a glass case with some of the either small items or more precious items. As you can see there's some radios. Here's the Here's where we found the Fiesta Ware. It's quite collectible by some. Some wooden knives. They're actually really good if you're using it for lettuce. Won't brown the lettuce. Same as glass knives are used for lettuce. A little tidbit tray. They do seem to have some preserves as well. They were advertising LPs. We'll see LPs in another one if we don't look at them here at this one. I keep an eye on uh, cast iron cookware. Most of my cast iron is not enameled, but you do need to have some enameled ones for acidic foods that are being cooked. You know, you take a look at some of these uh, stone carvings. They, they, they're trying to be Inuit. They may not be. There was a well-known Canadian a uh, carver, sculptor, he was, he, he was, I think he was Hungarian heritage, and they are not, they may be well done, but they are not native Canadian or Inuit carvings. He styles them in the same manner, but they are just, 
he, and he does mark him uh, truthfully as, as one of his products. If you come across something, you just look up the name that's carved on the underside, and it'll you'll get that the story of of that. And these are ceramic pieces in the main. Quite a selection. This building is in three floors, so it's oh, one of these fifties the pole lamps. Oh yes, some tobacco tins as well. Some newer items in that they're not a hundred years old. This one could be. This is a, a for typefaces, generally. Sometimes they're divided. Some sometimes a divided portion had been taken out and sold separately by someone. Roller skates, not roller blades. Roller skates. You strap them onto a sturdy pair of shoes. Ah, uh, yes, a sprayer of sorts. Powdered. They used powder in that particular model. Ah, uh, cornbread. Now this one looked interesting, but it's not very big because that's a salesman's sample. Cornbread are not typically only the size of a finger, but it does make for a very interesting display piece. Yes, it would actually work if you wanted to cook cornbread in it, but they're really petite. Some uh, handmade goods. I don't know if it's crochet or knitting or or macrame. It all involves a massive knot, in my opinion. That's all it is. Not to, I'm not disparaging it. It's just I I don't wrap my head around that making of it. I know it's enjoyable to many people, and they can certainly do enjoy doing so well that was an expo is 86 sort of coca-cola disposable glasses uh, we're getting into some ephemera there My goal on the, a video like today's is to show the breadth of what is being offered at a particular venue. Some places, they, they pretend to be something they aren't particularly. But this one is antiques, it's got vintage. This one's got LPs here. They've come down in price a lot. There are examples of individual LPs that are highly valuable, so it's not to say that there aren't any of those. Here we see a vintage Chinese checkers tin. Interesting license plates. Now these are some classic bottles of various drinks, mostly soft drinks. Nice brass bell. Fishing tackle was listed on the little advertiser sign there. And they had all these plaques with, uh, or framed up 
stock certificates there. Poker chips. Variety of collectibles. Curling isn't around as a separate name anymore. It's been absorbed into a couple of other breweries over the time. Some golf clubs. There's more than one of those M&M &M characters in, in this tour. And this place has a whole bunch of LPs. Some... A little horse f from, uh, I don't know if it was a an amusement park or one of those store rides that were quite common at one time. These are um, bobbins for spinning wheels. This guy has got a whole bunch of tools. Not necessarily ancient. They're certainly a bit older, but they're not ancient necessarily. You might find a particular treasure in that he had some ephemera as well as some license plates some <clears throat> wooden planes here's the ephemera whole collection of these some there were duplicates not particularly expensive but they are only a single page out of a magazine I then went and looked up some older vehicles that I've had over the years. This is not one I've had, but I think I ended up driving one at some point. Falcon was the compact car prior to the Mustang's appearance. <clears throat> and they were apparently very popular cars to purchase with really good sales records. They became the um, base of the 64 and a half Mustang. <clears throat> There's an older one, not the 64. The 64 interior and the 64 and a half Mustang interior 
were virtually identical. The differences were on the outer shell. <clears throat> they even shared engines and transmissions. The 64 Falcon had a 260V8 and they did get into the 289 which ended up being in the Mustang. The Mustang also had 600 or 200 cubic inch Falcon engine. Falcon, that it, Falcons were not just sedans, they also had vans up until at least 64. And another overview of some of the power tools in this case. And I don't know if this guy had the bottles or the next door booth had the bottles. number of people in the store. I was there quite early in the day. I was hoping it'd be a little bit quieter than it was, but it was okay. It was uh, I could avoid most of the folks just by not going into a specific booth and just coming back a bit later. And some classic uh, children's chapter books. Nancy Drew as an example. <clears throat> there are some of the later ones. I've had a nice set of early Bobsy Twins. They were f I, I enjoyed reading them far more than the newer versions. But we're talking a few years back. Must have been looking at those cast iron fry pans that they had there. There is a nice rotary phone there. There are some Pyrex. And some advertising tin. It would have been two-sided because it projected out from the wall. Interesting glass and salt and pepper. I'm not the expert in glass. Westwood Avenue is. So I won't even su suggest that a particular era it's from. some of the patterns were made over quite a long period of time. That was an interesting uh, airplane hanging from the ceiling. <clears throat> Taken a, what appears to have been a um, treadle sewing machine and made it into a wine bottle rack. Yes, they had overhead as well as down on the shelves and on the floor. You had to watch your, your noggin. Especially if you're a taller person. The Blackwater version of uh, Globe. Moves nicely, in nice condition. The price wasn't terrible. It's pretty much the retail price and a jewelry necklace holder. <laughs> There's another one of those M&M characters. He's got his uh, instrument. Yes, antique collectors do appreciate a good old piece. I'm sure there's multiple ways of interpreting that, but keep your mind clean. A 
milkshake blender and un unless it's new new wiring in it it's a new construction the polarized plug wasn't something that's been in use for that long it's been around a long time the receptacles have been able to accept it but it wasn't generally used on appliances and we have these uh, these mugs some older cameras and some older digital cameras and there we have something that I don't see quite as often Algoma Central Marine now they would end up in this area because of the ships that uh, travel back and forth in the Great Lakes I originally had thought that maybe it was Algoma Central Railway that would be less common to find in this area because they start from Sault Ste. Marie and go north. They've got comic books here. Some classic pieces. Of course, those who collect them would know exactly which ones they're looking for and which condition they'll accept. Some more soft drink bottles, some mugs. Uh, some artificial flowers I believe and we're still on this floor and there's a grip test that you can do for five cents and that at least that's what it was when it was placed out in the world I'm not sure five cents would do it anymore then we have some specific pieces that uh, these are sun purpled slightly these this uh, oil and vinegar and beside it there was a uh, rooster with that's a covered piece some couple of vases one of them which uh, has a label for being Murano but unfortunately that stuff is really the stickers are or you have to be able to authenticate it some way some other way in a slightly different phone this would be an intercom type phone because it's only got three buttons and a glowing light in the middle I don't know if it actually even has a ringer well thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this I'd appreciate a thumbs up and maybe even a subscribe and if you're really interested tinkle on the bell so you get notified Thanks a lot, folks. Bye-bye.